All right, let's talk about a really important function in Pico, which is mget. Basically, it lets you figure out what sprite is used for a certain tile on your map, which can be useful for setting things up like collision or changing things in your game, because you can base some of the logic on whether your player is over a certain kind of tile. Let's take a look at how it works. Here under update, we're just going to do kind of a little test just to show how this works. And here's how you write it. It's M-G-E-T. So this is short for map get. And what this does is you feed it a tile, an X and a Y for a tile, and it will tell you what sprite is loaded in that tile. So if it's one comma one, this is going to be the tile that's right here on our map. And what it should do is tell us 28 because that's tile 28. So M get one one. But right now this isn't gonna do anything or we're not really even gonna notice it. What we need to do is put this into a variable or print it or something like that. So we're just gonna print it, print M get one one. And here it says 28 in the upper left hand corner. So let's test out and make sure this works. So here at three tiles on the X and two tiles on the Y, we'll put 27. And so now our M get will say three on the X and two on the Y, save, run. Hmm, 28, what's going on? The reason that's not working is because these tiles, they actually start at zero. So this is zero, zero. And when we asked it to do one, one, it was actually asking about this one, which happened to be the same answer. So what we really need is x2, y1, 2, 1, save, and now it says 27, that's right. So what we can do is we can feed our players x and y value to this to get whatever tile our player is over. But there's a problem with that. These x and y values that we're feeding to mget are the cell values. That means this x and y down here. So if it's three tiles over, it's gonna be x2, y0. And that's different than the pixel values, which is what our player uses. So what we have to do is convert our player's x and y values into cell values. So if we say player x, that's not gonna work. But if we say player x divided by eight, that'll give us a rough number for our cell value. Now, this isn't quite going to work either because this number that this will give will be a float. That means a number like, you know, 3.0985, whatever. And this isn't a number that the mget is going to understand. What it wants is an integer, so just a whole number like this. So a great way to kind of round this down to the nearest number is with a function called floor. So floor, I'll just type this here so it's a little easier to read, is flr, and then we have the parentheses, and then you put whatever math you want to happen in there. So if it's 10 divided by three, that's gonna be 3.333333, right? And so what it's gonna do is round it down and it's going to end up as three. So it's basically going to get rid of the remainder, which is good. So that's what we wanna do here. I'll put parentheses around player X divided by eight. And right before that type FLR and same thing here, FLR parentheses, and make sure we close all our parentheses like that, save, run. And now wherever our player goes, that number in the upper left is gonna to change to whatever it's over. So it's gonna to change to 27 when it's over 27. If it's over the green, it's gonna be 28. This is gonna give us the tiles on the road, 44, 60, and so on. Now, something to note, this is sampling from the very top corner of our sprite, the top left corner. So if we are like right by this, and we just go into this 27, it's gonna be 27. But if we're mostly over the 27, and we're just a little bit off of it like that, it's gonna call it 28, because that's where the top left corner of our sprite is. So what we can do is add a little bit to our X and Y values so that it samples from the middle, and it's a little bit more accurate as far as what our player is over. That's really easy, player Y, say plus four, X plus four, and now it's gonna be more of the middle. So if I just drive over this road a little bit, oh, haha, <laughs> what we need to do is put parentheses over that because order operations, if we're gonna add a value to our player and then divide stuff, we need to put these in parentheses first so that it happens first. And now it'll work like that. And it's sampling from the middle of the sprite. So whatever it's mostly over here, 
that's what we're actually going to be calling. So this is a great thing to use if you want to make the player go faster on the road, let's say. If you want to check for collisions, if you want to play a certain sound when you get somewhere, anything that you want to trigger based on where the player is on the map, this is a great way to do it. So I hope that's helpful for anybody learning Pico. What do you want to learn next? Why don't you put it in the comments below? That would be awesome. And make sure to subscribe because I'm going to be making some more of these. Okay, bye.